Good morning, bonjour, buenos dias. It's Tom Padula from Tom Padula TV on YouTube and uh, Insegna Booksellers. And this morning is lesson number 28 on the 30th of September 2022. Uh, yeah, it's almost a year now that, uh, uh, you know, I've, I've started uh, my journey here uh, on Facebook live. And uh, it's been quite a journey so far, with um, four hours a week now, almost. Uh, if we consider that uh, I do a bit extra on Fridays now for Spanish as well. Uh, so I'm very happy that uh, the way things have gone and um, that I can offer this service. Now, of course, during the journey, you get ideas about what to do, what not to do. And I am here at Insegna. Uh, Almost well, almost every day. Uh, but I, as a, as a sole trader, I, I do. You know, I expect people to, if they want to see me, they have to call me by appointment, uh, and that way make sure that I am here. Uh, but I am here most of the time, so it's not a problem. But uh, I could be doing other things uh, whilst I'm here, so it's better for people to actually uh, give me a call. Now. I've been thinking about, uh, you know, what sort of a service I can offer people in terms of languages. And I thought, well, why not, you know, have a few people uh, who are interested in learning French or Spanish or both and Italian as well uh, to come to see me uh, and uh, make arrangements with me uh, so that I can tailor the program to your needs and uh, basically direct you uh, to where you can, you know, what you can learn and how to get there. And of course, it all depends on your commitment towards uh, learning the language. But, uh, you know, it can't have too high expectations when, you know, you don't live in the country where the language is spoken. So there are certain uh, activities that you can do to enjoy the journey and uh, eventually to travel to those countries and uh, improve, uh, you know, whatever you're learning. So really, it's your own journey that counts, uh, regardless of the teacher, really, and regardless of the uh, materials that you use. And in the end, it's got to be up there and in here. Uh, the two things go together. So that's it. Now, we are doing, of course, grammar now, uh, focusing a bit on the grammar, but with some practice, quite a lot of practice in both French and Spanish. I haven't touched the other languages on purpose for a little while. Uh, I'll come to them. I'm try trying to work it out how to do it, uh, maybe the last quarter of an hour right at the end. And that way, that will, you know, it'll sort of... Um, go to uh, the hour on a Friday. Uh, also, uh, Channel 31 at the moment has my programs on Tuesdays at 1.30 uh, and uh, Fridays at 12.30. So it's 44 on your dial. Mm -hmm. If you want to look there or if you want to go to YouTube, you can. And you can do Tom Padula TV or just Tom Padula you know, there's quite a few, uh, quite a few uh, lines there that you need to enter in your smart TV in order to enjoy the, you know, the presentations, and uh, so much more. So that's that's what we're doing today, uh, and I'm happy to to say that uh, you know I'm almost ready. <laughs> Just one last thing. In terms of the songs, I've been doing the ones that we've been doing up to now. Now, as of next next week, it'll be term four. So I will be at um, the University of the Third Age uh, there in Deep Dean, U3A, and I'll be teaching French on a Wednesday from 9.15 to 10.15, and then from 10.30 to 11.30, we'll be doing Italian. And there are a couple, you know, two groups there already that have signed up. So happy to be starting again. And uh, as a result of that, I'll be working a little bit harder to bring you more French songs 
uh, or more songs in French and more songs in Spanish. Okay, so that's basically it. If you need any resources, of course, again, come to see me. Uh, and if you're really keen about it, you need resources, both uh, the material type and, of course, if you have uh, a good mobile with, uh, you know, that can do a lot of things, that's, that's good too. Uh, you need both. I think you need both. That's what I do. I use both uh, sides uh, because online, you know, a screen is a screen. Uh, but, you know, books offer you so much more in terms of presentations. Okay, I think that's it. It's 11.30 and I'm going to start. Where are we going to start? We continue with the idea that um, when you learn a language, you do need three things, basically, to, to make sure that you get them in your brain and they stay there. One, words. More words. The more you have, the better. Adjectives. Again, the more you have, the better. And not now when to put them before or after the noun. And verbs. And that's quite, uh, that allows you to write small, easy sentences, short sentences. Uh, and uh, longer ones. But you've got to start, you have to start with the short ones. So if you have uh, I am Australian, I have an apple, that sort of thing. I eat at midday. I walk long distances. I dance with someone. So there you are. Those are the sort of sentences you want to write. And the more, the more of them you write, the quicker you get to the language. And if you really want to do yourself a favour, then do the... Uh, read from the sketches that I've been reading. Les Femmes Parlent Trop and uh, Simone Fébon Impression. Those two plus the readers and you'll get there. Now, I want to talk about the partitive... What are we... What are we no, not that one. We have... We, we went through omissions... Omissions of the indefinite article. We did omissions of the definite article. So, uh, you know, we we got to that one. Yeah. I think so. I think we did. Uh, where am I up here to here? Uh, oh, gosh, I didn't write it down. 14. No, that's fine. Nouns and articles. Here we are. A plus la. A plus, do not contract. For example, we have the definite article contract with a and de. For example, a plus la. I'll show you. Here we are. See that? A plus la becomes o. A plus le becomes o. A u x. Okay, so au cinéma, uh, uh, but if it's in a plural, au cinémas, you know, whatever. Uh, also, uh, well, you can do the exercises later, but this one's here, a plus la and a plus l apostrophe do not contract. So let's have a read. Je vais au musée, je parle aux garçons. Je parle aux, aux élèves. Je vais à la pharmacie. Je parle à l'étudiante. J'arrive à l'hôpital. De plus le is, becomes du. De plus le becomes de. De plus la do not contract. De plus l do, do. So in the feminine they don't contract, but in the masculine they do. So je parle du garçon. I'm speaking of the boy. Je parle des garçons, of the boys. Je parle des étudiantes. Je parle de la fille. Je parle de l'élève. Quel est le nom du livre? You see that? And I'm speaking with... And, uh, I'm not going to do the English. I expect people to, know, to be able to understand this a bit. Uh, 
Je parle aux élèves. The X plus the E, you know, beginning with a vowel, they sort of combine. Je parle aux élèves. Je parle des étudiants. Okay, complete the following mini dialogues. Not going to do that. Answer the following questions from the list below. No, we're just going to read the words. La boulangerie, le cinéma, la pharmacie, la confiserie, le théâtre, le stade, la bibliothèque, la boucherie, la pâtisserie, les musées, la crèmerie. And this one here. Où va-t-on pour acheter du pain? Where do you go? Where does one go to buy some bread? Où va, où va à la boulangerie pour acheter du pain? A bakery. Boulangerie. Okay. Où va-t-on pour regarder un film? Where do you go to see a film? Où va-t-on pour acheter des bonbons? Etc. You have to answer those questions. And there's more. So we can read them. Okay, you can learn the words. Où va-t-on pour acheter du lait? Where do you got to buy some milk? Où va-t-on pour regarder des peintures? Où va-t-on pour acheter de la viande? Où va-t-on pour regarder un match de football? Où va-t-on pour acheter des cachets d'aspirine? Où va-t-on pour regarder un spectacle? Où va-t-on pour lire des livres? They're pretty easy words. Lait is milk, ponture is painting, viande is meat, football is what it is, gâteau is cake, cachet d'aspirin, of course, it's, you go to the pharmacy, spectacle is the theatre, deliver, etc. Okay? So, in the next one, the indefinite article. The indefinite articles in French are earned for masculine and nouns and un for feminine nouns. The plural is de, des. Note the liaisons between des and words beginning with a vowel. We've already seen those. So let's have a look at the words. Okay? Un livre, un garçon, un élève, un ami. In the plurals, des livres, des garçons, des élèves, des amis. Une ponture, des pontures. Une fille, des filles. Une élève, des élèves. Une amie, des amis. Notice the S is not pronounced. Some nouns have two genders. Huh? You can have two genders with the same noun. Un élève and un élève. One is masculine, one is feminine. Un artiste, un artiste. Un enfant, un enfant. You get the gist. There. And then you do the exercises. Omission of the indefinite article. Unlike English, the indefinite article is omitted after the verb être to be, when the verb is followed by an unmodified noun indicating nationality, religion or profession. Okay, so let's have a look at some of the words. Elle est médecin. She is a doctor. She's a doctor. Elle est médecin. Il est catholique. He's a Catholic. Elle est canadienne. She's a Canadian. So, in terms of, again, these things here come with practice. You can't remember them straight away. We've seen them. That's enough for now. So, what you do there is you wait, you read, you pick it up, and you try to remember when you see it. If you make a mistake, don't worry about it. You'll correct yourself as you go along. C'est un français. C'est un, when c'est is used instead of il est, the indefinite article is used. So if you say, this is a Frenchman, c'est un Français. He's a Frenchman. C'est un avocat. He's a lawyer. The indefinite article is also used when the noun follows the verb. Ver verb être is modified. So, Victor Hugo est un auteur célèbre. Victor Hugo est un auteur que tous la, les Français connaissent. So everyone knows Victor Hugo. Etc. Other omissions of the indefinite article. The indefinite article is not used after quel. Quel belle vue. Paris, ville ancienne, est la capitale de la France. Une robe de sol, un professeur d'histoire. Il travaille sans argent. Travailler avec, avec soin. 
with care. Travailler avec des amis. Il n'a ni, ni argent ni pain. Il n'a ni pain ni bread. Le positive article. The English, we use the word some or any or no article with nouns that cannot be counted, such as milk, coffee, and tea. In French, the partitive is used with these nouns and the partitive article cannot be omitted. The partitive is expressed by the plus the definite article. We call them prepositions. Note that the plus le equals du and the, the plus le is de. So notice the, you know, the, those changes that you have to make. So, singular is du, de la, de l'apostrophe, de, 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 in the plural. Study the following. J'ai de la soupe, elle veut du sucre, elle boit de l'eau, voulez-vous des oranges, nous avons des livres. And that's basically it for today. As you can see, there's more about, you know, we've done quite a few pages of of rules regarding uh, the use of nouns and articles. And we haven't finished. We've got another few pages still, you know, discussing many other uh, things, nouns and articles, uh, the part of your article, exception to the rule, et cetera, et cetera. We do that next week. So that's basically... You know, whereas in Italian and in Spanish, it's a lot more simple. A lot more simple. The, the whole idea of, you know, the, the uses of, uh, well, the article in French is quite simple, except with the prepositions. It's a bit like with the Italian, you know, the prepositions, they call it the partitive. It's the same thing. Now, we've done that. Today I'm going to finish off um, the reading of Simone fait bonne impression. And this is scene 12. Okay? And I'm not going to, I'm just going to read it and then show it to you and read it once more. Okay? Welcome to Assunta Lombardi and Libby Petrella. Oh, that's lovely. Libby, thank you for coming on. Simone, Papa. Viens que je te présente mon ami de Biarri, Monsieur Dancourt. So why am I reading it first without looking at it? It's because listening is the first one. Listening is one of the four skills you need to learn. Listening, speaking, reading and writing. Now we're doing all those as we go along. Okay. Papa, viens que je te présente mon ami de Biarri, Monsieur Duncourt. Monsieur Jolivet s'avançant entre les deux, Simone à gauche. Vous êtes le bienvenu, Monsieur, à Simone. Est-ce le même? <rire> Marcel, je viens vous présenter mes hommages et vous demander la main de votre fille. Simone, tu veux bien? Simone, oh oui, papa. Elle se cramponne à son bras entre Monsieur Russell qui cherche sa broderie. Monsieur, et entre Madame Russell qui cherche sa broderie. Monsieur Jolivet, serrant la main de Marcel. Eh bien, je vous souhaite à, à tous deux tout le bonheur possible. Nous ne pourrions désirer un meilleur fi, fils et un meilleur mari pour Simone. Monsieur, Madame Jolivet et Marguerite sont entrées à gauche. Madame Jolivet s'assoit à gauche de la table. Marguerite va vers la porte de droite. Euh, Monsieur, Madame Roussel est derrière la table. Je vous disais bien qu'on était ici comme à une noce. <rire> That's Madame Roussel. OK, let's have a look. So this is it here. Okay, uh, well, read it again. Uh, Papa, viens que je te présente mon ami de Biarritz, Monsieur Dincourt, Monsieur, Boli, Monsieur Jolivet. S'avançons entre les deux. Simone à gauche. Vous êtes le bienvenu, Monsieur, à Simone. Est-ce Simone le même? That's me, yes. 
je viens vous présenter mes hommages et vous demander la main de votre fille. I come to see her, and I'm ask for your daughter in marriage. Simone, tu veux bien? Really? Oh, Simone, oh oui, papa. Elle se camponne à son bras entre Madame Russell qui cherche sa broderie. So she's in between her parents, both mother and father. Monsieur Jolivet, serrant la main de Marcel, eh bien, je vous souhaite à tous deux tout le bonheur possible. Nous ne pourrions désirer un meilleur fils et un meilleur mari pour Simone. Madame Jolivet et Marguerite sont entrées à gauche. Madame Jolivet s'assoit à gauche de la table. Marguerite va vers la porte de droite. Monsieur Russell, derrière la table, je vous disais bien que qu'on était ici comme un, you know, we are here like in a, uh, like in a nut, in a walnut. <laughs> ah well. Or you know, it could be, it could be like at a wedding. Yes, that's what it is, a wedding. I had to mention the word wedding. I thought the noche in Italian is walnut. <laughs> well, it's got two parts. So, you know, when two people get together, like it could be like in a walnut, in other words, in a marriage situation. Okay. Oop. There you are. That was Simon Fedon Impression. Now, these are the two booklets. I've only got a few copies left of Simon Fedon Impression and also, and also Les Femmes par retour. You want to do yourself a favor if you're learning French, uh, go to my website, insegna.com, and order them in. That's the best way of doing it. I can't encourage you to do better than that. I, you know, at the end of the day, uh, all this is comes, it's quite a, an easy transaction. You're learning a language, you need to invest in it, and uh, I can provide the material, really. And if you don't want to come here, you can do it somewhere else. Uh, you have to, you know, these are the books that I'm using here whilst teaching. Other t teachers might use more expensive books from overseas, and I have those as well. Or you can use some of the, the, the ones that have been traditionally used, no longer in use, etc. Okay? Cheers. Now, uh, parlons, let's speak in French. Parlons français. In fact, this book, I've got very few copies of this particular left. But we'll see what happens. Okay, now, this is exercise preparatoire. We're speaking in French now. Okay, and there are some illustrations which I'm not going to show you, but I'm going to read the exercises first, uh, the sentences. Wherever there are sentences, I will read them out, and then that will be your practice. Est-ce que Madame Moreau Marou est à la gare ou à l'aéroport. Il est à l'aéroport. Monsieur Moirou, qu'est-ce qu'il fait Il achète un journal. Où est-ce qu'il achète le journal Dans un kiosque à journaux. Où est-ce qu'il a mis sa valise et son sac de voyage sur une petite chariot à bagage. Qu'est-ce qu'on voit par la fenêtre On voit des avions. Qui est la jeune fille qui marche là-bas à gauche C'est une hôtesse de l'air. OK, let's do it again together. Est-ce que M. Moirou est à la gare ou à l'aéroport. Il est à l'aéroport. Qu'est-ce qu'il fait Il achète un journal. Où est-ce qu'il achète le journal Dans une kiosque à journaux. 
ou dans un, dans un kiosque à journaux. So, dans un, you can, the S and the un, dans un kiosque à journaux. Où est-ce qu'il a mis sa valise et son sac de voyage? Sur une petite chariot à bagages. Where she placed them. Qu'est-ce qu'on voit par la fenêtre? On voit des avions. Qui est la jeune fille qui marche là-bas à gauche? C'est une hôtesse de l'air. You can almost, you can almost guess the words there. Okay? Now, this is conversation sur l'image. Uh, the image was right at the beginning of the, of the lesson. Where are we? Telephone. Let me see if I can find it. No, wasting time here. I'm just going to go to the exercise. Conversation sur l'image. Est-ce que Monsieur Moirot est à la gare ou à l'aéroport? Il est à l'aéroport. Qu'est-ce qu'il fait? Il achète un journal. Où est-ce qu'il achète le journal? Dans un kiosque à journaux. Où est-ce qu'il a mis sa valise et son sac de voyage sur un petit chariot à bagages? Qu'est-ce qu'on voit par la fenêtre On voit des avions. Qui est la jeune fille qui marche là-bas, à gauche C'est une hôtesse de l'air. OK So, that's where we're going to stop. There, because I think I, we deserve a couple of songs, no That's the fun part. This was... Practice, practice, practice. Simone fait bonne impression. We've done the other ones. We've done those. And now, the, 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 where did I put it? Here. Okay. Now, these are, I'm not going to do this again because I've done them for a whole term. Okay, so we're going to do a few of them just for revision. And then next week I'll start with new songs, okay? Uh, because it'll be, uh, it'll be uh, a new term. A new term. La vie en rose by Edith Piaf. Des yeux qui font baisser les miens. Un rire qui se perd sur sa bouche. Voilà le portrait sans retouche de l'homme auquel j'appartiens. Quand il me prend dans ses bras, il me parle tout bas, je vois l'avion rose. Il me dit des mots d'amour, des mots de tous les jours, et ça me fait quelque chose. Il est entré dans mon cœur, une part de bonheur dont je connais la cause. C'est lui pour moi, moi pour lui dans la vie. Il me l'a dit, l'a juré pour la vie. Et est-ce que je l'aperçois alors je sens en moi mon cœur qui bat. Des nuits d'amour à plus finir, un grand bonheur qui prend sa place. Des ennuis, des chagrins se fassent, heureux, heureux à en mourir. Quand il me prend dans ses bras, il me parle tout bas. Je vois l'avion rose. Il me dit d'un mot d'amour, des mots de tous les jours, et ça me fait quelque chose. Il est entré dans mon cœur, une part de bonheur dont je connais la cause. C'est toi pour moi, moi pour toi dans la vie. Il me l'a dit, la jurée pour la vie. 
Et dès que je t'aperçois, alors je sens dans moi mon cœur qui bat. La 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 And that was Edith Piaf. It's a beautiful song, and it takes a while to, you know, to learn it. But we're going to do now another one of hers called Rien de Rien. This is a song that the, the Legion d'honneur has made it, its own. Okay, so here we go. Let's go. Non, rien de rien. Non, je ne regrette rien. Ni le bien qu'on m'a fait, ni le mal. Tout ça m'est bien égal. Non, rien de rien. Non, je ne regrette rien. C'est payé, balayé, oublié. Je me fous du passé. Avec mes souvenirs, j'ai allumé le feu. Me chagrin, mes plaisirs. Je n'ai plus besoin de balayer les amours avec le tremulos. Balayer pour toujours. Je reparte à zéro. Non, rien de rien. Non, je ne regrette rien. Ni le bien qu'on m'a fait, ni le mal. Tout ça m'est bien égal. Non, rien de rien. Non, je ne regrette rien. Car ma vie, car mes joies, aujourd'hui, ça commence avec and that's the second one that we did and then there's of course the one that's fam made famous not only by Edith Piaf but also by the Italian singer Milva lyrics uh, that's Milord okay allez venez Milord vous asseoir à ma table There we are. Allez, venez, milord, vous asseoir à ma table. Il fait si froid dehors, ici c'est confortable. Laissez-vous faire, milord, et prenez bien vos aises. Vos pains sur mon cœur et vos pieds sur richesse. Je vous connais, milord, vous ne m'avez jamais vu. Je ne suis qu'une fille du porte, qu'une ombre de la rue. Pourtant, je vous refroidis, quand vous passiez hier, vous n'étiez pas peu fier, dame, le ciel vous comblait. Votre foulard de soie flottant sur vos épaules, vous saviez le beau rôle, honneureux, dit le roi. Vous marchez en vainqueur au bras d'une demoiselle, mon Dieu, qu'elle était belle, j'en ai froid dans le cœur. Allez, venez, milord, vous asseoir à ma table. Il fait si froid dehors, ici c'est confortable. Laissez-vous faire, milord, et prenez bien vos aises, vos peintures, mon cœur, et vos pierres sur une chaise. Je vous connais, milord, vous ne m'aviez jamais vu. Je ne suis qu'une fille du port, qu'une ombre de la rue. Dire qu'il suffit parfois qu'il ait un navire pour que tout se déchire quand le navire s'en va. Il emmenait avec lui la douce aux yeux si tendre qu'il n'a pas su comprendre qu'elle brisait votre vie. L'amour s'est fait pleureur. Comme quoi l'existence qu'a vous donne tout toutes les chances pour les reprendre après. 
Alle venez, milord, vous avez flair du môme. Laissez-vous faire, milord, venez dans mon royaume. Je soigne les remords, je chante la romance, je chante les milords qui n'ont pas eu de chance. Regardez-moi, milord, vous ne m'avez jamais vu, mais vous pleurez, milord, ça j'aurais jamais cru. Eh bien, voyons, milord, souriez-moi, milord, mieux que ça, un petit effort, voilà, c'est ça. Allez, rien, milord, allez, chantez, milord. La 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 enjoyed doing those three songs but there's also Salvatore Adamo we did these other ones too so we've done I think we've done five all together and I'm going to sing this one here it's Salvatore Adamo Tombe la Neige okay so here we go this is the other song Tombe la Neige tu ne viendras pas ce soir Tombe la neige et mon cœur s'habille de noir, ce soyez cortège. Tout en larmes blanches, l'oiseau sur la branche, pleure le sortilège. Tu ne viendras pas ce soir, me crie mon désespoir, me tombe la neige, impassible manège. Tombe la neige, tu ne viendras pas ce soir. Tombe la neige, tout est blanc de désespoir, triste certitude. Le froid de l'absence, cet odieux silence, blanche solitude. Tu ne viendras pas ce soir, me crie mon désespoir. Mais tombe la neige, impassible manège. Mais tombe la neige, impassible manège. And of course, Salvatore Damo also has given us another one that, well, I don't know whether it's here. If it's here, I'll sing it for you. Let me see. Yes, La Nuit. If I remember it. Si je t'oublie. Si je t'oublie pendant le jour, je passe mes nuits à te maudire. Et quand la lune se retire, je l'âme vide et le cœur lourd. La nuit, tu m'as... La nuit, tu m'as... Non. So, what happens here? When you then don't remember, you just can read it and it'll come. Let me see. Si je t'oublie pendant le jour, je passe mes nuits à te maudire et quand la lune se retire, je l'aime vide et le cœur lourd, lourd. La nuit, tu m'apparais immense. Je tends les bras pour te saisir, mais tu prends un main plaisir à te jouer de mes avances. La nuit, je deviens fou, je deviens fou. Et puis ton rire fond le noir, et je ne sais plus où chercher. Quand tout se tait, revient l'espoir, et je me reprends dans tes mères. Tantôt tu me reviens fugace et tu m'appelles pour me naguer, mais c'est chaque fois mon son se glace, ton rire vient tout effacer. La nuit je deviens fou, la, je deviens fou. Le jour dissipe ton image et tu repars, je ne sais où, vers celui qui te tient en cage, celui qui va me rendre fou. La nuit je deviens fou, je deviens fou, je deviens fou. Now, I know the song, 
But when you sing the others, then sometimes you forget the tune. So those are the five songs that I've done in the French classes in Term 3 and Term 2. Now, Term 4, I'm going to do other ones. Okay, so that was French for today. And, uh, well, I've enjoyed that because there's a... I did a few songs, which is what I love doing. <laughs> yes, and now we're going to do Spanish. Spanish. Where are you, Spanish? <laughs> Where is Spanish? One, two. Uh, let's me see. Simon fait bonne impression. There we are. I've got, I've got you, I've got you under my skin, here. Okay. We go, we're going to do now, huh? we're going to start with, no, but I've done enough singing now. I'm going to leave that history for after. We'll go straight into, okay. Uh, the, the opposites in, in, in Spanish, okay? Opposites. Let me see. Fácil. Difícil. Mucho. Poco. Ali. Aquí. Sí, easy. Difficult, difficult, a lot, little. There, here, aquí. And then we got grande, pequeño, pe, pequeño, pequeño. Grande is big, pequeño is small. Trabajador, perezoso. See, laboratore in French, hard working and lazy, perezoso. Flaco. Gordo, flaco, gordo, is it fat or, or greedy, viejo, joven, viejo, old and young. So these are the opposites. Fifi es bonita, fifi no es fea. Como es fifi? Eh? Fifi è bonita, bo, bi, bon, fifi no es fea, con la fea. Come es el hombre? Come es el libro? Come es el profesor? Come es el niño? Come es la madre? Easy ones. You know, hombre, man, book, professor, or teacher, uh, the young man, or the mother. El niño, el figlio, no? Es pequeño el elefante, is the elephant small? No, it's not. Hay pocos oficinastas en la oficina? Hay pocos oficinistas en la oficina? Esta aquí la casa, is the house here? No, it's over there. Esta delicioso el helado? El helado is gelato, it's, it's the ice cream. El helado. Come mucho, como, come mucho el hombre? How big is the man? Como es, ay, ay, esta, etc. El cuerpo humano, the human body. Okay. El pelo. La cabeza. El hombre. El hombro, el brazo, el codo, el trasero, la pierna, the thigh, la pierna, el ojo, ojo, la nariz, la boca, el labio, el mentón, el cuello, la espalda, la espalda. La mano, el dedo, la rodilla. 
el, el pecho. Pecho, but it looks like pecho. El seno, el brazo, el estomago, la mano, la pierna, la rodilla, el pie. ¿Qué es? What is this? Es un hoyo. So you could ask, you know, ¿qué es? Uh, es el pelo. ¿Qué es? Es la cabeza. ¿Qué es? El, ¿Qué es? El, es el hombro. Can you see the way you can make those sentences? You can make hundreds of them. Okay? So, son hojos, son hojos. What's hojos? Huh? Ojos. Well, must be feet or something. No, son ojos, son piernas. Son orejas, son bocas, son narices, son menton, mentones, son cuelos, etc., etc. And that, that's it for, the, for this one here. So the, it's the practice, you know, you practice the Spanish. And that's um, important to practice, practice, practice. And now the next one is... Uh, revision of verbs. You know, you do need to revise the verb. But before you revise the verbs, you should really revise the... Do you know how you say I, you, he, she? Do you remember? Yo, tú, usted, nosotros, vosotros, están. Let's have a look. Let's have a look at the way it is... This works. Yo is I. Tu, el, ella, usted, he, she, you know, it or on. Nosotros, vosotros, elos, elas, ustedes. That's the you plural. Ustedes. Yo to, and, uh, you know, because the verbs don't conjugate, when you conjugate a verb, like, you know, uh, I am, yo soy, yo, tú eres, él es, él es, usted es, nosotros somos, vosotros sois, ellos son, ellas son, ustedes son. Okay, they put they, uh, we and they, and then they put you plural at the end. Don't know why. It's normally I, you, he, she, it, uh, we, you, they. They've done it in, they've done I, you, he, and then we, they, you. Doesn't make sense. Should be the other way around. That's the way you learn it in other languages. But in Spanish, that's the way they've done it in this book. Also, you can use the verb estar. Yo estoy, tú estás, él está, ella está. Usted está, nosotros estamos, vosotros, vosotros estáis, ellos están, ellas están, ustedes están. Now in that, uh, so there are two verbs meaning to be in Spanish, ser and estar. Ser is used to describe people and things and for telling the time. Estar is used to describe the position of things such as is in America and temporary conditions such as it is raining. Okay, está pioviendo, you know, things like that. Tener is to have. Uh, is yo tengo, yo tengo, tú tienes, él tiene, ella tiene, usted tiene, nosotros tenemos, vosotros tenéis, Tenés, uh, vosotros um, tenéis. Huh. With uh, tengo, they put, uh, they put the you in the right place. <laughs> uh, tienen, they, they have. So, uh, ela, elos and elas tienen. O usted tiene. Ustedes tienen. Uh, the other verbs are to hablar, 
Ablo, abla, sabla, ablamo, sablai, sablan. I would like to learn it like this. Yo, ablo. Tu, ablas. El, ella, usted, habla. Nosotros hablamos, vosotros habláis, uh, usted, uh, elos o elas uh, hablan. Verbs that end in ir, to go, like say, you know, to go. Voy, yo voy, tu, tu vas, il, el, el, el va. Uh, nos, nosotros vamos, vosotros vais, uh, elos, elas, vain, van. Vivo, I live. Vivo, vives, vive, vivimos, vivis, vives, viven. So you got to look at this very closely. Uh, not bad, not bad at all. I'm just going to do the the two songs, and then I'll finish off for today. Okay, so we're going to start with Cuando caliente el sol aquí en la playa, siendo tu cuerpo vibrar cerca de mí es tu palpitar. Es tu cara, es tu pelo, son tus besos, me estremezco cuando calienta el sol. Cuando calienta el sol, aquí en la playa, siendo tu cuerpo vibrar cerca de mí, es tu palpitar, tu recuerdo, mi locura, mi ledio, mi delirio, mi estremezco. Cuando calienta el sol, cuando calienta el sol. En la historia de un amor, ya, ya no estás más, ya no estás más a mi lado, corazón. Si, now it doesn't come. I had it before, and now it doesn't come. Ya no estás más a mi lado, corazón. Y en el alma solo tengo soledad. Y ya no puedo verte porque Dios me hizo quererte para hacerme sufrir más. Siempre fuiste la razón de mi existir. Adorarte para mí fue religión. En tus besos encontraba el calor que me brindabas, el amor y la pasión. Es la historia de un amor como no hay otro igual, que me hizo comprender todo el bien, todo el mal, que le dio luz a mi vida, apagándole después, ay, qué vida tan obscura. Ya si tu, si tu amor no viviré, ya no estás más a mi lado, corazón, y en el alma solo tengo soledad. Y si ya no puedo verte, porque Dios me hizo quererte para hacerme sufrir más. Es la historia de un amor, como no hay otro igual, que me hizo comprender todo el bien, todo el mal, que le dio luz a mi vida. Apagándola después, ay, qué vida tan obscura, si tu amor no viviré. Yo no estás más a mi lado, corazón, y en el alma solo tengo soledad. Y si ya no puede verte, porque Dios me hizo quererte, para hacerme sufrir más, sufrir más, sufrir más. Friday has come to an end and uh, as I said uh, maybe from next week I'll start introducing uh, the other languages uh, in the last quarter of an hour uh, just to talk about them you know not necessarily uh, learn them uh, directly but I do have uh, books in 20 languages so we'll just have a quick look at them okay so on this note thank you very much to those people who've come on and uh, the ones who watch me during the week because a lot of people do come on during the week and I can see it that you know I would love to for people to make comments if uh, they enjoy the you know these uh, 
this lessons or podcasts or presentations and I hope that I can encourage you to learn at least one other language apart from the one that you speak. On this note, thank you very much. Gracias, muchos. Uh, merci bien. Uh, à la prochaine, next week. Okay. From Tom Padula of Tom Padula TV on YouTube and Insegna Booksellers. Adios.